Monsanto was the first to genetically modify a plant cell in 1982. Advertised as part of their mission to feed the world, their GMO crops sought to give them a monopoly on the food industry. We're Monsanto, and we're working with farmers and partners worldwide to realize a vision for sustainable agriculture. Monsanto was already producing a widely used pesticide known as Roundup. And to ingeniously sell more, they engineered a plant to be resistant to heavy doses of Roundup's glyphosate poison, called Roundup Ready. But such a new and uncertain invention faced public skepticism and bureaucratic hurdles. Lucky for them, this was the Reagan era of runaway deregulation. Monsanto executives arranged to meet with then Vice President George Bush Sr. with the desire to work on mutually beneficial regulation to quell consumer fears about this radically new technology. Bush assured them that the red tape would be lifted. And I would say, quite frankly, we have no complaint about the way USDA is handling it. Uh, they're going through an orderly process. They're making sure Very that as they deal with these new things, they do them properly. And uh, now, if we're waiting until September and we don't have our authorization, we may <laughs> say something different. <laughs> no, man, we're in a direct <laughs> And boy, did he. Soon after becoming president, Bush Sr. created a new deregulation initiative called the White House Council on Competitiveness. According to the Washington Post, it was a command post for a war against government regulation of American business. And Monsanto was first on deck. In 1992, the council oversaw new FDA guidelines that stated GMO crops required no additional testing or regulation, despite protests from within the FDA due to the uncertainty of long-term environmental and health consequences. Over the next 20 years, Monsanto, with the government's help, flooded the planet with seeds and ate up its competition, acquiring dozens of companies along the way. Monsanto now produces 80% of the corn and 93% of the soy, two ingredients that make up the base of almost all processed foods in the U.S. Poll after poll finds that a huge majority of Americans want GMO labeling, just like every other developed country required long ago. But multi-million dollar propaganda campaigns and fear of lawsuits from Monsanto have prevented any state legislation from going into effect. I was an attorney in the corporate depart law department of Monsanto Company. Making sure Monsanto policy was cemented long after his administration, Monsanto co-conspirator Bush Sr. also appointed former Monsanto lawyer Clarence Thomas to the Supreme Court, one of the deciding votes to see his son W in power. Throughout the 90s, Monsanto spent millions defeating state and federal legislation to continue to dump dioxins, pesticides, and other cancer-causing poisons into drinking water systems, causing degenerative disease and numerous birth defects, according to multiple lawsuits. By 1995, the EPA had ranked Monsanto fifth among U.S. corporations on its list of top dumpers of poison, having discharged over 37 million pounds of toxins into the air, water, and land. In 1994, the company overcame another controversy, corralling its friends and government to approve bovine growth hormone, which artificially increases milk production in dairy cows. The FDA gladly accepted data from Monsanto's sponsored trials, determining there is no difference between milk treated and not treated with RBGH, despite widespread opposition from consumer advocates. Mr. Chairman, there is an issue of enormous consequence that I fear has not gotten the kind of discussion and attention that it needs from this body. And that has to do with the introduction of RBGH, Monsanto's bovine growth hormone, uh, into the marketplace and the impact that it is going to have on family farming, on animal health, and perhaps on human health. Also, I must tell you that I am extremely concerned about the role that the Food and Drug Administration has played in this entire process. And among many other concerns that I have is that at least three high-ranking members in the Food and Dr Drug Administration formerly were employed by the Monsanto Corporation. Today, the hormone is banned in Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. Unable to tolerate even a modicum of competition, Monsanto has ruthlessly gone after small farms attempting to label their products RBGH-free. It's also lobbied several state legislatures to pass preemptive bans against hormone-free labeling. As usual, Monsanto employed its multi-million dollar propaganda machine to fight the scientific warnings about their product. In 1997, Monsanto told Fox News head Roger Ailes to shut down an investigative report on RBGH, and even had the two journalists fired days before it was to air.
Monsanto's very survival depends on going to war against the science that could take it down. With billions of dollars to spend for every scientific study that warns of the hazards of Monsanto's products, it conducts its own studies to counter it and employs its own propagandists to debunk it. Like passionate GMO advocate Professor Kevin Fulta, exposed to be a paid Monsanto shill by a FOIA request after years of denying any ties to the corporation. In addition to paying sellout scientists, Monsanto sometimes buys the whole lab. Biologics research firm is one trying to get to the bottom of the global honeybee collapse. While Biologics would obviously study the effects of the world's most used pesticide, Monsanto outright bought the company. Even with the media in its pocket, Monsanto would not be the criminal powerhouse it is today without total collusion and partnership with the U.S. Empire. So on behalf of the Monsanto team, uh, welcome. We are uh, honored to be a part of this dialogue. I want to thank you for um, the collaborative efforts that you've put towards uh, agriculture. Throughout the decades, Monsanto has had a lucrative revolving door relationship between its company and operatives in public office. Every administration has worked closely with Monsanto, rewarding the chemical beast with endless contracts and subsidies. Iraq's occupation governor, Paul Bremer, even decided he had to go out of his way to help Monsanto before leaving his position. As one of his last acts, Bremer passed a pro-Monsanto order, stipulating that Iraqi farmers shall be prohibited from reusing seeds of protected varieties. But Obama has been one of the most pro-Monsanto presidents thus far. Heavily sponsored by the ag industry, He's given the company billions to secure a foothold in Africa and appointed several Monsanto executives to top government positions. Like Roger Beachy, a director of Monsanto who was appointed by Obama to be director of the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Or Islam Siddiqui, a Monsanto lobbyist who Obama picked to be an agriculture trade representative. Siddiqui's job is literally to promote and sell Monsanto crops. Another one of their paid for puppets, Senator Roy Blunt, passed the 2013 Monsanto Protection Act by sneaking the provision onto another bill, giving the company legal immunity. But no one takes the cake of corruption like Michael Taylor. He left the FDA to lead Monsanto's law practice until being appointed by Bush Sr. to a cushy new FDA position just in time to sign off on the contested rulings for both RBGH and GMOs. Taylor left the government again to cash in on his clout, this time to work as Monsanto's vice president. In 2010, Obama created another FDA post tailored for Taylor. And now he's back, rubber stamping pro-Monsanto legislation as the deputy commissioner for foods. With decades of creating a well-oiled machine of propaganda, protection, and privilege, their latest tricks to protect their profits threatens more people than ever before. Their longtime cash cow Roundup is the cause of the newest emerging threat from the corporation. Roundup's true danger is classified. Monsanto is not required to disclose their secret recipe. But what we do know is that the main ingredient, glyphosate, has long been considered toxic. Many studies have already made the connection between glyphosate exposure and a number of serious human health effects, including cancer. But in 2015, when the World Health Organization finally upgraded glyphosate to a probable carcinogen, Monsanto made nearly $5 billion in Roundup sales alone. With so much profit at stake, its main interest has always been to keep the health risks of glyphosate hidden. After defeating legislation to put warning labels on Roundup back in 1986, Monsanto's production of the mix surged from 11 million pounds per year to 300 million pounds by 2012. A 2016 Environmental Sciences Europe report found that 18.9 billion pounds of glyphosate has been used globally, more than any other weed killer in history. Today, the most popular crops all over the world are engineered to survive heavy doses of this poison. But while crops are Roundup ready, people are not. And now it's everywhere. Scientists have found it in over 70% of rain samples. And the US Geological Survey discovered that 38 states had the toxin in the majority of their rivers, lakes, and water treatment plants. Monsanto countered the latest news that glyphosate is in 93% of Americans with the promise that these levels are harmless to humans with its usual assurance that they can be trusted. But warnings from science and health professionals are only growing louder. Several studies, including by the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health and the National Cancer Institute, found farmers' risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma doubles when their crops are sprayed with glyphosate. Just this May, five Nebraska farmers stricken with non-Hodgkin lymphoma filed a lawsuit against Monsanto for intentionally misleading customers about the health risks of Roundup. But beyond the serious health risks to humans, Roundup threatens us with potentially catastrophic food crises. 
Not only has Roundup's super technological expensive method not proven higher crop yields, the entire ecological balance of the earth is threatened by Roundup's toxins. While Roundup is extremely effective at killing things, nature has fought back with widespread repercussions. Monsanto Company, the manufacturer of Roundup, spent years erroneously advising farmers to exclusively use ever greater quantities of Roundup to control the weeds in their fields. And for years, farmers listened. Meanwhile, these weeds were receiving evolutionary pressure to select for a trait of resistance to Roundup. The Roundup resistant trait is now dominant in weeds growing in many areas of the country. Roundup use has created increasingly invisible super pests and super weeds, resistant to the chemical designed to kill them. They cover more than 15 million acres in the U.S. alone, posing potentially devastating effects to food production. But Monsanto's leaving the world's farmers little choice. Despite making profits of over $8 billion in 2015, Monsanto viciously goes after small farmers for patent infringement by telling them that for the first time in history, they can't replant their own seeds. Farmers who must purchase Monsanto's seeds are forced to pointlessly buy new models every year. If they don't, they're ruined by Monsanto. Since 1997, Monsanto sued 147 farmers for so-called seed piracy, or rather, replanting their seeds from a previous crop, a practice as old as agriculture itself. According to a Vanity Fair investigation, Monsanto relies on a shadowy army of private investigators and agents in the American heartland to strike fear into farm country, where they secretly videotape and photograph farmers, store owners, and co-ops, infiltrate community meetings, and gather information from informants about farming activities. Monsanto even hired the notorious mercenary army Blackwater, today known as Z, as its intel arm, using literal mercenary soldiers to spy on, infiltrate, and harass activist groups organizing against the biotech firm's crimes. Now, Monsanto's seemingly unstoppable growth is possibly entering a new level. The domination of its crops is full speed ahead toward an unprecedented agricultural monopoly. Currently in negotiations with Bayer, the two are the top suppliers of agrochemicals, seeds, and GMO crops. A marriage between them would take that dominance to a new level. From India to Brazil, there are millions of victims, not only from Monsanto's dark poisons, but from the economic warfare it's wreaked worldwide. The fight against Monsanto is not just taking place in the courts, but in the streets, where a heroic movement is building. On May 23, 2016, tens of thousands of people protested against the ag giant in over 400 cities across at least 40 different countries around the world. As Monsanto grows into an even bigger beast, planting the seeds for new environmental and health catastrophes, joining the ranks in the fight against this criminal corporation is growing ever more urgent. The consequences are too great to let this monster live, and its trail of suffering leaves no doubt that it must be taken down.